Good morning. I'm Mother Leslie Stewart of Resurrection Episcopal Church. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, you can download the bulletin. You can find that link on our website uh, under our blog post, and you can find it there. Um, we have many interesting things that are coming up today and many announcements that we're looking forward to sharing with you. Uh, so please stay tuned for more announcements that will happen in the middle of the service. But for now, it is, let, come let us worship. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hold the church 
and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now have our reading. Thank you for your patience as we switch to the video. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, starting at the first verse. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourself and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a child? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 116. We will read it responsively by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication and because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. 
I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. reading from the book of Romans chapter 5 starting at the first verse since we are justified by faith we have the peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God not only that but we also boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew chapter 9 beginning at the 35th verse the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew glory to you Lord Christ then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness when he saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananea, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the last sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons. You will re you received without payment. Give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, 
find out who is in it that is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. what it was that he said that he would do, what he had promised. 
and they stepped out in faith. They had been called out from their land and their own people, and they set out across the desert. They made a covenant with God and bet their whole lives on it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's how you know that this is a live event. <laughs> God told them that they would be made into a great multitude of nations, that their numbers would exceed that of the stars in the sky. And when Abraham was first told that Sarah would be, ma be, be made to be with child, he thought that that was laughable, given his age and Sarah's age, and the fact that you know, history was on their side. Sarah had been barren all of those years. And in this week's reading, Sarah overhears that she will be with child, and she laughs too. I mean, after all, she was 90 years old. Sometimes, when a very long time has gone by, where things have shown us that they are going to stay the same, that there has not been change, we find it hard to believe that even God can transform it. And often God comes disguised as strangers. Strangers often show us what we really believe about ourselves, and about God, and about the other. When we come up against the way things have always worked, or when science and biology are a challenge to what God has told us in faith, or when what God presents to you just seems too big for you alone to handle, we wonder, is there enough power to transform this? Well, I did make breakfast this morning. These are my solar uh, cookie bites. They're like um, cake pops, really and I just covered them with a simple sugar so that they would be like the donut holes that we often had on Sunday mornings. And I made this with really no power for myself, just the power of the sun. Can God change a system? Can God really do something supernatural outside of the laws of science and nature? Can God change the hearts of everyone else out there? Really, the big question is, can God transform me into who I need to be to bring about this change? I think that's where doubt is most likely to enter. Can God do anything with my old bones? I've known myself my whole life, and I have never been capable of doing what God is asking of me. And that may be true. But the question is, does God, the creator of the universe, have enough power to transform? The strangers knew that Sarah had laughed about it. It says the Lord said to Sarah that she had laughed. But when pressed, she said that she didn't. And the stranger said, yes, you did. But not only does she eventually have a son, Isaac, from the root word to laugh. She ultimately declares that God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. In other words, God does something in her life that transformed her laughter of disbelief into a shared laughter of joy. The truth is there is more than enough power in this good world that God has created. God can do not only the improbable, but the impossible. Our gospel reading today is like fast forwarding through Abraham and Sarah's story. We get to see that the spread of their people will continue to go on, like a ripple effect. And it'll go on through Jesus' disciples. Jesus transforms ordinary people, like you and me, to do the work of spreading the good news. As Matthew tells it, the story of salvation is a story of wider and wider circles of inclusion. First, Jesus' followers, and then the lost sheep of the house of Israel, 
and ultimately everybody else too. As it says in Matthew 28, all nations. It is a story of love transcending the divisions we construct along ethnic or religious or racial lines, even ge geographical lines. God's divide transcending love is what the world cries out for today. In the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, or racism and inequality, or the climate crisis, or a broken relationship, or I'm telling you any other challenge that you face, progress can seem laughable and impossible at first. But the good news of the gospel is that we're anywhere love or justice seem laughable, the Spirit is already at work calling the church to join her. It may take some time and struggle and tenacious hope, but in the end, God will transform our private laughter of disbelief into shared laughter of astonishment and joy. As the mysterious visitor puts it to Sarah, is anything too wonderful for God? This week, let us be like Abraham and Sarah, sharing in their faith, who even though they didn't know how God would do it, they stepped out in faith and went where they were sent. They were open to the possibility of change and leaned into that possibility. They offered themselves to God's service and were transformed themselves and made into God's change agents in the world. I believe I can do it, and I believe that you can too. Let us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us affirm that faith with the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us. <clears throat> for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, 
for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and George R. Sumner, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. I'm going to come around now so that I can uh, share the announcements with you. So there is an announcement that is not on the slide presentation. Uh, we are going to do Warrior Church next week. Warrior Church always happens on the third Sunday of the month, and we have not been able to do it since the COVID-19 thing. Uh, part of that reason is because it involves a workout, and gathering together for a workout, has that's just really not uh, the favorable thing to do, given the current CDC guidelines, and touching all of the same things. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a Warrior Church event that has a guided meditation specifically aimed at people with PTSD and healing PTSD. We'll be posting that event later this week. Please tune into it. Communion is available for pickup on Saturdays from 11 to 12. Okay. One moment while I figure out how to change the slide. Here we go. Also, Flat Paul. Flat Paul is moving around and tag, you are it, Gross family. The Gross family received their Flat Paul book uh, yesterday on their front porch and I already received a picture of Ian uh, taking a, a look at the book. So any uh, adventures they take him on this week and any pictures they send to me, I will, um, <laughs> I will share those with you on our Facebook page. White Rage, a historical perspective on racism in America with Dr. Laura Burnett. That class begins this week. Uh, it is a good idea to get the book, but if you are not able to get the book for some reason, you can uh, contact Shannon at resurrectionplano.org to be sent a link for the uh, discussion that happens this week. And also that will uh, put you in touch with Laura Burnett and she will be able to give you some additional readings that are out there available for free. So on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. the lecture will be posted to Facebook and on Thursdays at 1 p.m. is our group discussion that you need that Zoom link in order to join. I do hope that you will join us. I think it is a great idea to have a discussion of um, through the historical lens. Looking at it through the lens of history takes you and I out of the center of that conversation and we can just take a look at the lessons that are available for us to learn. Your best dad jokes. That is another event that is happening this week. Super excited about it. I have received several uh, jokes through email and some videos have been sent to me. 
I'm going to send out a Zoom link for our 7 p.m. Wednesday meeting on June 17th. Uh, <laughs> we hope to have an official comedian with us as well. I am working on that. And um, I think there are going to be some prizes. Some surprises at that meeting. Looking forward to it. Thank you for everybody who has made their submission. Episcopal Family Ministries. Uh, we're going to have, through the month of July, recorded talks from area psychologists. We're, we're trying to help families and children who have been affected by COVID-19, uh, help them cope, give them some tools for coping. So each week there will be a different webinar. Uh, those videos will be posted. We're going to share them on our site, but it'll also be posted on Episcopal Family Ministries website and their social, social media stream. Um, we're going to be sending out an opportunity for parents to sign up, and I encourage you to do so. Only 50 will be allowed to be in on the call, so that way everyone has a chance to participate in the conversation. Lighthouse leader training. Uh, our lighthouse leaders are praying and thinking about who they are inviting to their groups, um, and we still have some additional training to do. This will be an ongoing training that we'll do. If you are interested in starting a lighthouse group, this is different from an internal small group within the church. We're not placing members of the church in, in the small groups. What we're doing is we are reaching out. These are people who are saying, I'm willing to start a small group and I'm going to recruit my own members from my, my neighbors and friends and family. Um, this is a method that we're using to grow our church, but really it's just to outreach to people who are in need right now of community and prayer support. And virtual coffee hour. If you want to join us for that uh, from 9.30 to 10.10 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, this is our little gathering like we would do around the coffee pot there at church. Uh, if you're interested in that, get in touch with me for the live stream link. And we have several convenient ways to give. You can give through PayPal. The donation button on our website connects with that. You can send a check to 3609 Stephen Drive. Or you can text to give. You just enter, you send a text to the number 73256, type in Res Plano and the amount that you want to give, and it will get to us. Oh, and we have birthdays and anniversaries today. A very special birthday blessing to Julia Kent, who turned 16 this week. Happy birthday, Julia. We are so excited for you. Let us say this birthday prayer for all of our people who have had a birthday. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for uh, anniversaries. This is your anniversary prayer and blessing. All praise and blessing to you, God of love, source of blessing for married life. All praise to you for you have created courtship and marriage, joy and gladness, feasting and laughter, pleasure and delight. May your blessing come in full upon them. May they know your presence in their joys and in their sorrows. May they reach old age in the company of friends and come at last to your eternal kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. be with you and also with me. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
for those who were not able to come to pick up communion from us yesterday. We have this prayer of spiritual communion that we will say together. In union, blessed Jesus, with your faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given to me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us gather our thoughts of thanksgiving using the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you always. Amen. One moment while we bring up the video, please. For some reason, there's a delay and it is not responding. And believe me, you want to hear McKenna sing it instead of me. <laughs> we will be singing Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, hymn number 423. And we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Have a blessed week. 
We will see you at morning and evening prayer. I'll see you at several of the events this week, and we hope to see you back here next Sunday at 1030. God be with you.